Women's hockey closed out the regular season at home this weekend. See how they did. And women's basketball faced off against two top MAC opponents. All that and much more. Sports ball starts right now. Welcome to another episode of Sports Pause. I'm Ryan Coop. Alongside me is Steve Pappas. Steve, we've got a packed show here tonight. Why don't you get us started? Very busy show indeed. Let's start with some women's ice hockey. The Battle of Whitney Avenue starting off senior week here in Hamden. The number 10 Quinnipiac Bobcats against the Yale Bulldogs. The third installment of the Battle of Whitney Avenue this season. The Bobcats 2-0. Let's pick it up here in the second period with senior captain Katie Taven. Taking a shot from the point, it gets redirected off of one, or not one, but two Quinnipiac Bobcats. Sarah Ev Kutsugadbu gets credit for the goal, it gets reviewed. The Bobcats lead 1-0, but now here in the second, Claire Dalton goes right past Katie Taven on the backhand. Roofs it top shelf on Abby Eyes. The game is tied at one. A little later on, Dalton sets up Claire Walsh for the one-timer that beats Eyes, giving the Bobcats a lead going into the intermission. Let's go now to the third period. Bulldogs up 2-1, to one, still attacking. Rebecca Vanstone, shot blocked, however, puck pops up into the air and behind Abby Eyes and into the back of the net. Yale would extend the lead to 3-1. to one. Now late in the third period, the initial shot, an outstanding save by Abby Ives, but whacking away at it is Rebecca Fogja. She ends up putting it past Abby Ives. The final score, Yale 4, Quinnipiac 1. We now send it over to Quinnipiac uh, men's, women's ice hockey, excuse me, beat reporter Mike Dalton discussing Yale's interesting trek to Hamden. For the third time this season, the Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team faced off against the Yale University Bulldogs. The Bobcats won the previous two contests, both ending in a 3-1 final score. But what looked like a promising start for the Bobcats with Sarah Evkutu Godbu's 13th goal of the season turned disastrous. The Bulldogs had an offensive surge, scoring four unanswered goals en route to a 4-1 win over the Bobcats. This is just the second game this season that the Bobcats have lost by three goals to an opponent. But that wasn't even the strangest part about the Bobcats' unusual performance. In fact, it had nothing to do with the game itself. Last Friday, the Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team's bus ended up breaking down on the way to their game against Clarkson. And now tonight, Yale's bus ended up breaking down on the way to the Frank Parati Jr. Arena. So is this Bobcat team cursed going into playoffs, or is it just a simple coincidence? Only time will tell, but for now, reporting from the Frank Parati Jr. Arena, I'm Mike Dalton, Q30 Sports. After their loss to Yale on Friday, the Bobcats look to get back to the win column as they hosted Brown for Senior Day. Quinnipiac women's ice hockey versus Brown. Goals, goals, and more goals. Who scored them? Let's find out. First period, Renee Saltness lights the lamp on the breakaway. Bobcats won, Brown nothing. Two and a half minutes later, Zoe Boyd from the top of the point. Wrist it in, two nothing Bobcats. Later on, Taylor Gerard shot, saved by Isaac. Rebound off the body of Saltness. Second goal of the game for Saltness. Bobcats lead three to nothing. And Taven cranks it past Isaac with just over a minute left. Bobcats four, Brown Bears zero. And that was just the first period. But does Brown have a comeback in them? Let's head to the second frame. Sarah Ev Kudu got food behind the net. To Grace Markey, shoots and scores. Makes it five nothing. 34 seconds later, Taylor Gerard down the near boards. Roofs it. If you've lost count, the Bobcats are leading 6-0. Bobcats on the power play. Puck in the crease. Everyone hacking away. And Sadie Peart puts it in the back of the net. 7-0 Bobcats over the Bears heading into the third period. Less than five minutes left in regulation. Grace Markey between the legs. Second time she's done that this year. And the second goal of the game for her. Now Sarah Evkudu Gabu with 30 seconds left notches her 15th goal of the season. Bears would score but the Bobcats would win in stunning fashion on senior day 
Now we go to Mike Dalton, who was the recap to the Bobcats' big senior day win. Great way to finish our season at home today. This group of leaders, they're, they're lighthearted. You know, there's been just a... It's a fun air around our group every day. You know, they they have that balance in being able to compete hard, but laugh and, you know, and enjoy it. So it's been a lot of fun. It's really hard to put into words because they've done so much for this program. We had some struggles over the years, and I think for my class it's just this year, like finally, like finding that again and being in the top 10, it just like, it means a lot to me and my, my whole class. They're all, everyone's hilarious. We have so much fun every day. Like it doesn't matter if we're going to Ireland or if we're in Hampton. The Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team ended its season on a high note on senior day, throttling the Brown Bears by a score of nine to one. And as for the ECAC tournament, the Bobcats already know who they will be playing. We're playing Princeton. It's definitely going to be a battle, but um, I think it's a great opportunity and it's a great um, time to show who we really are. We're just going to bring a ton of experience, a ton of mental toughness into it. I think that we definitely have the group this year to do it. Reporting from the Frank Prodi Jr. Arena, I'm Mike Dalton, Q30 Sports. Now let's take a look at how the ECAC Hockey Tournament bracket turned out now that the regular season has come to an end. And with the regular season ending, playoffs will begin this weekend. Number one seed Cornell will take on number eight, St. Lawrence. Number seven, Quinnipiac will travel to New Jersey to take on Princeton. Number six, Colgate will be at Clarkson. And Harvard will host Yale in a battle of the Ivy schools. Plenty of action to be seen as the ECAC women's hockey playoffs begin. Women's hockey beat reporter Connor Olthorne is live with us in the studio to preview the upcoming playoffs. Connor, take it away. Hey guys, we've got a bunch of games coming up as you just stated. There was the bracket, and I'm going to break down one of probably the most competitive ECAC hockey tournaments coming up that we've seen in a while. Five of these eight teams are in the top 12 pairwise ranking, so definitely expect to see some close games. All right, game number one, number one Cornell taking on number eight St. Lawrence. And I'm going to say Cornell is going to sweep this game. Cornell, they swept St. Lawrence in the season 4-1 to one and 3-2. to two. They've got six seniors on Cornell and they've been to every ECAC hockey tournament as well as Frozen Fours. They've got the experience needed to win this game and it's really not going to be much of a contest for them. We know who's coming out of this one. Game number two, number four Harvard at number five Yale. Excuse me, Har it's Yale at Harvard. I got Harvard in three games. Harvard, they swept the season series five to two and four to two and they've shown that they can score on anyone. While they are a bit of a younger team, they can get that really good scoring playoff depth that they have. They've got three sophomores with Petrie, Della Rivera, and Ann Bloomer as the top point scorers on their team. But they're seniors. They give really good depth and they're great leadership to this overall good Harvard Crimson team. And they have a phenomenal goalie in Lindsey Reed. She's had a good year and she's a 9.15 goals against and under three goals, excuse me, 9.15 save percentage and three goals against in 16 games. Game number three, number three Clarkson versus number six Colgate, and I'm taking Clarkson in three games. Clarkson, they won and tied against Colgate, so this is going to be a tough battle for both these teams. We have seen Colgate compete with some of the best teams in the nation. They had a, that tie against Clarkson. They had a 1-1 tie against Northeastern, who right now is number three in the USCHO poll. They had a 1-1 tie against number seven Ohio State, and they beat Harvard as well. So lots of experience coming in against some of the best teams in the nation. First year, Kaylin O'Donnell, she's exploded towards the back end of January. And as you can see, she's had 13 points in her first ECAC hockey season. And I believe that's why this game will go to three games. I don't doubt Clarkson in this situation, however. I think Colgate's going to give them a run for their money, but I think Clarkson's coming out on top. And the final game of the first round, number two Princeton versus number seven Quinnipiac. And I'm going to take Princeton in three games. I know some people definitely will not agree with that. But Quinnipiac should not be in this situation at all. They had a chance to lock up the, the five or the six spot if they beat Yale, even got just a single point against Yale. Instead, they dropped that game to Yale. They beat Brown, on the other hand. But right now, they're really not looking too great coming into this tough game against Princeton. And Princeton, they did sweep the series 4-2 and 3-2, and the Tigers just stomped Yale 5-1 the game before playing Quinnipiac. And QU, they also, the QU lost that Yale game 4-1 to at home. I think that Princeton wins in three, but it's only because Quinnipiac knows what to do. We spoke to some of the players today, and they know they will have to came that first line of Sarah Fillier and Carly Bullock and Maggie Connors. All three of those players have over 39 points this season, and they're 2-3-4 in ECAC hockey scoring. 
Quinnipiac will need to compete, and this team's been one of the most competitive we've seen in an extremely long time. Even Cass Turner said that. Every single player said this team can compete, and that's why I think this game's going to three. All right, we're going to move into the semifinals right now. It's Cornell versus Harvard, and I'm taking Cornell. Harvard hasn't been the most convincing against top 10 teams in the, this season. Beginning of the year, they were on fire. They were taking on everybody, beating everybody. But as soon as that January break came around, they dropped all their games against tough competition. They had a really poor showing in the women's bean pot against Boston College and Northeastern. And then they also dropped points to Colgate, Cornell, and Clarkson twice. And Cornell's just been this dominant this year. I mean, I would never take them over anyone else. And I think that's going to be more than enough just to get them through the final. Semifinal number two. I'm going to take Clarkson over Prince. I know I really like Princeton in the Quinnipiac game. This game, not as much. I believe Clarkson, they're going to have the experience that Princeton does not have on the other hand. Clarkson's made the ECAC Hockey Playoff Final since 2016, and they've won it every year since 2017. They've got Elizabeth Jaguer. Okay, that might even be enough to beat Princeton. She's going to win ECAC Hockey Player of the Year at this point. You don't get over 60 points and not get that. And Gabrielle David, she's having a great first campaign, 36 points on the years for her, and they've got one of the most experienced and best goaltending in the nation. Even though Marie Pierre Colombe is a sophomore, she's 120 goals against average and a 950 save percentage. I don't know how you get much better than that at all. You know, that's just incredible. She got ECAC Hockey Goal of the Week, and I think Clarkson is going to need that big push to get them over that top line of Princeton. All right, now down to the final game, Cornell versus Clarkson, and I'm taking Cornell in overtime, though. Cornell is just dominant. I said it before. I'm going to keep saying it. We're going to say it for the rest of this ACAC, target, ECAC hockey tournament, excuse me, and, the, and in the Frozen Four. They're the number one team in the nation. All right? They're on this. They're riding one of the nation's longest unbeaten streak, 19 straight games, and they've only had one loss this year. Lindsey Brownie has been one of the best goalies in the nation. It, excuse me, the best goalie in the nation. 950, you get better than that, she has a .8 goals against average. That's why I think Cornell, they're coming out on top. Guys, what do you think of the desk? Yeah, Thank it's you. hard, oh, go ahead. So it's, it's Thank hard you, to Connor. go against. It should be exciting to see how things go, um, but we'll see how it wraps up. And taking it from the ice over to the hardwood, the Quinnipiac women basketball team had a tough weekend as they tipped off against two MAC opponents, starting with Ryder on Friday. The fourth place Quinnipiac women's basketball team hosting the second place Ryder Bronx. The Bobcats fell to Ryder back on January 9th. On to the first quarter, Michaela Morris reverse layup is good and won for the first year forward. The Bobcats and Bronx tied at seven heading into the second quarter. Stella Johnson with the rejection on Hurd, and good defense leads to good offense as Johnson goes coast to coast. Bronx lead the Bobcats 33-28 at halftime. Third quarter now. Shaq Edwards driving to the basket and flying in is Jaden Ward for the rebound. Count it and one. Ward finished with 12 points coming off the bench, but here comes the Bronx. Stella Johnson for three. Kaboom! The Broncos leading 50 to 44, heading into the fourth quarter. The Bobcats came back to tie the game at 52, but the Bronx would steal the lead back and beat Quinnipiac 68 to 60. Stella Johnson with a stellar game finished with 29 points. After the game, Jack Main was there to recap the Bobcats' tough loss. A tough game for Trisha Fabry's squad tonight, falling to the Ryder Bronx 68-62. The game was tight and was even tied up at one point in the fourth quarter at 52. NCAA leading scorer Stella Johnson would not let the Bobcats come back, and the Bronx were able to close out late. Despite the loss to the Max top seed, Fabry and her team are taking away the positives in the loss. I loved how we were able to mix our defenses um, and really uh, go to the man-to-man -man exclusively and, and force them into some tougher shots. Uh, Amari getting in fail trouble in the first half allowed us uh, to keep it close to being down five. But I just think, you know, us mixing in for blending, not exclusively man-to-man, -man, allows us just give teams different looks not to get comfortable. Um, I don't think so. I think we got a lot of good looks from the three. And... That just goes to show that how good we are this year, that without making any threes, we were still right in that game. You know, 
once we get there, we're going to want it that much more. And I think we really have a strong chance this year to do it again. The Bobcats have a quick turnaround playing in-state rival Fairfield on Saturday. Reporting from the Lender Court at the People's United Center, I'm Jack May, Q30 Sports. Well, the Bobcats are looking to bounce back from Thursday's loss against Ryder as they took on in-state rival Fairfield on Saturday. The Stags use a dominant second and third quarter to pull away from the Bobcats as they win this one 72-60. Shaq Edwards and Michaela Morris led the way for Quinnipiac with 15 points each and the struggles from beyond the arc. Well, they continue for the Bobcats just shooting 2 of 11 on Saturday in the loss. After the Bobcats' two losses, let's take a look at the updated MAC standings and see where things shape up as we get closer towards the tournament later on this month. At the top of the table, it's the Marist Red Foxes at 14 and two in conference and winners of seven straight. Just a half game behind Marist is the Ryder Bronx who the Bobcats lost to on Thursday. They're winners of their last four. Rounding out the top four are the two Connecticut teams in Fairfield and Quinnipiac. So let's take a break, but when we come back, men's basketball played host to Canisius on ESPNU, where were the Bobcats able to show out on national television? And men's hockey took on RPI and Union over the weekend. Stay tuned to see how they did. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Welcome back. You're watching Sports Pause with Ryan Coop and Steve Pappas. We've still got tons of fun ahead. Let's take it to men's basketball, who look to snap a five-game losing streak against Canisius. Quinnipiac Bobcats at home against the Canisius Golden Griffs on ESPNU. Can the Bobcats end their five-game losing streak? We'll start in the first half with a nice finish from Brendan McGuire. Then Aaron Falzone lobs it up to Seth Pinckney for the dunk. Pinckney would have three lobs in the first half. Then Falzone goes down and shoots a three. He would have 24 on the game, but the Bobcats are down 39-32 at half. Going into the second half, Malik Johnson hits a pulled up jumper to make the lead six. However, the Bobcats start a run to cut into the lead as Tyrese Williams drives in, goes out to Matt Polanc, to Jacob Ragoni for the long three-pointer. Then Tyrese Williams drives in and puts up the layup to tie the game 54-54. Kevin Marfo helps extend the lead here with a tough finish. However, Canisius cut into the Bobcats' lead as Falzone at the free throw line. Bobcats up two and he misses. 
Canisius goes down to try and tie, but Kevin Marfo blocks it, sealing the win. Here's him after the game talking about the block. I'm just worried about the next game. You know, that's my, like I said, my, it was my time to step up and make a play for my teammates, and that's what I did. You know? The Bobcats win the game 66-64, ending their five-game losing streak. Well, following the huge win at home, the Bobcats travel down to Monmouth to try and make it two straight wins for the first time in over a month. The Bobcats' good start faded as they were defeated by the Monmouth Hawks 89-78. to This marks the seventh loss in the last nine games for the Bobcats, dropping into 7-9 in the conference. Aaron Falzon led the way with 24 points and 6 rebounds. Their turnover struggles, they continue as well for the Bobcats. They turned the ball over 17 times in the loss on Sunday. The Bobcats will host Canisius here on Wednesday. Now let's take a look at where the Bobcats sit in the MAC men's basketball standings. St. Peter's sits atop the MAC, followed by Siena, then Monmouth, Ryder, Iona, Quinnipiac, Manhattan, and Fairfield. With just a few games left this season, it should be exciting to see who could shake up the standings. Well, the men's ice hockey team traveled north this weekend to take on RPI on Friday night. The Bobcats in desperate need of a win to stay in pace in the pairwise race. And let's take a look at what happened. We'll set the stage 1-0 right now. RPI with the lead. RPI on the power play here in the third period. As we take a look, it'll be Will Riley giving the puck to Todd Burgess, who shot fines the back of the net to extend this lead here for RPI to 2 to nothing. That was on the 5-on-3 advantage late in that third period. A little later on here in the third, as we see Quinnipiac off a turnover, Jake Johnson shoots the puck into the wide open empty net to give the RPI engineers the 3 to nothing lead, basically sealing this one, but 3 was not enough as with just over 30 seconds left to play in this game as we see the celebration. RPI in front with an empty netter with four minutes left to play, but just over 30 seconds left to play. Ottoville Lepinen with the drop pass to Michael Gornall, who finds, his, uh, finds the puck to Tristan Ashberg, who finds the back of the net. And that was adding insult to injury as the RPI engineers would win this one four to nothing. And now let's take it. After a tough loss to RPI, the Bobcats will look to pick things up Saturday versus Union. A big overtime win for the Bobcats. Keith Petrozelli had a big night in net, facing 27 shots and having 25 saves. The scoring, Quinnipiac came back from being down 2-0. Michael Lombardi got the comeback party started for the Bobcats, and it was Odin Tufto who had the tying goal along with the game winner. The Bobcats complete the comeback in overtime. Following a one-on-one -one weekend, let's see where the Bobcats fall in the ECAC hockey standings. And after Harvard's bad loss against St. Lawrence, Quinnipiac is able to jump the, to sole possession of third place in the conference. A Bobcats win or tie in an RPI loss this weekend would secure a first round by for the Bobcats in the ECAC Hockey Tournament for the, for the second straight season. And now let's take a look over at the pairwise rankings. North Dakota sits in the number one spot, followed by Minnesota State and Cornell. Quinnipiac sits all the way back at number 19, but will look to push forward as the playoffs start. Well, after a Tough weekend for the men's ice hockey team looking to go 2 and 0. We're going to take our final break of the show when we get past when we get back about some baseball, some softball and some of the other spring sports that have been going on. Plus the best plays of the week. It's the top 5 plays of the week coming up next. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi.
One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has pre-diabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You. Your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You. Your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you. Your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this cocker spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Welcome back to Sports Pause. It may be cold outside, but spring sports are heating up. Let's go to baseball. Much like some of these spring sports teams, baseball searching for their first win of the season as they travel down south to take on James Madison. As you can see, the first two games did not go the, the Bobcats' way. Shut out in both games, just one hit in the second game. However, that would change in game number three as the first two games saw, saw no runs. The third game, well, that was runs galore between Quinnipiac and James Madison. In the series finale, the Bobcats are looking to avoid to go 0-6. The Duke's up 10-2 right now, but in the sixth, not, it's not over just yet. Colton Bender doubles off the wall, scoring Ian Osberg. The Bobcats starting to chip away. Then Kyle Horton with a pair on and only, uh, hits his second career home run. And the Bobcats inching closer here in this one. Now into the seventh inning. Evan Volgamore looking to join the party. His second home run of the season. And later in the inning as well, as you see that one fly over the left center field wall from Evan Volgamore. He touches home plate. Now the Bobcats slowly chipping away. Now Colton Bender brings the Bobcats within one with a home run of his own. It's a three hit, three RBI day for the Bobcats backstop. It's now 10 to nine. And down two with one out in the ninth. Ian Osberg comes through. Marrero scores. Volgamore chugs around third and he scores. Bobcats come all the way back from eight down to tie this one at 11. But the Dukes would have the final word as first year Chase DeLatter would end this game with a double in the gap, winning the game for the Dukes at home, 12 to 11 and dropping the Bobcats to 0-6 on the season. And now for our favorite time of the night, the top five plays of the week. Steve, why don't you get us started? Yes, I will. We'll start with number five, women's ice hockey against Brown. Zoe Boyd taking a wrist shot from the point. Seeing eye wrister goes through everybody, rips it top shelf. Bobcats would win that one at nine to one as we take a second look at that one. And now on to play number four, women's ice hockey versus Yale. Claire Dalton dangles her way through the Bobcats defense and goes to her backhand to score a beautiful one for the Bulldogs. Play number, an OT. play number three now, Anthony Rinaldi with the puck for Union. He deeks a Quinnipiac defender before shooting the puck off Keith Petrozelli's blocker. It trickled over the goal line. Rinaldi getting that one. QU wins it in overtime, 3-2. Play number two, men's basketball versus Canisius. Scott Hitchin drives towards the net, but Kevin Marfro's there to say, absolutely not. The Bobcats hang on to win, 66 to 64. And our final play of the week, Mike Gornall with the pass to Tristan Ashbrook, who puts the puck in the back of the net and with a spinorama there. Let's take another look at that one in slow-mo. 
outstanding athletic ability to keep to stay with the puck. RPI wins that one four to nothing. Well, that's all the time we've got for tonight. Be sure to check in next week, same time, same place. It's sure to be another fun week of sports balls. To stay up with all of Quinnipiac Athletics, follow Q30 on Twitter at Q30 Sports and visit our website, Q30TV.com. For Ryan Coop, I'm Stephen Pappas. Good night, Quinnipiac.